Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Things appear still very grim and tough in Victoria at the moment, but contrary to some commentary, we are not alone in being subjected to a second lockdown. The UK city of Bolton is going back into lockdown. They are the second UK city to go back into lockdown after Leicester. And from Monday, the people of England will now only be allowed to gather inside or outside of the home in groups of six in, in response to a coronavirus spike. So why are our governments deciding to yo-yo its citizens in and out of lockdowns whenever there's a spike or a wave in new coronavirus cases? Recent polling showed that the majority of Victorians still support uh, the lockdown measures to suppress the coronavirus, which is probably why Daniel Andrews has decided to continue the lockdown. In other Australian states with uh, contained coronavirus figures, uh, state border closures, which have been t tearing uh, border communities apart, are still highly popular. Uh, to discuss the politics of lockdown uh, as a whole, I'm joined by another uh, Melbourneian who is a critic of our slow path uh, out of lockdown, Nathan Kyle. Welcome to Wilmsfront. Thanks for having me, Tim. And now, uh, obviously, uh, during uh, the pandemic and uh, the, 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 the lockdowns, there's been a lot of uh, new uh, people on, on, on social media uh, expressing their uh, uh, frustrations uh, as uh, this uh, pandemic and, well, Melbourne has gone through its second lockdown now. Uh, we still don't know. And, of course, this, this one's even stricter and there, there doesn't seem an, an end in sight. So I've uh, met oh, well, uh, through my show, met and online uh, through uh, so many uh, new people have just started to uh, speak up and become active, particularly on Facebook this year. <laughs> Yeah, it's been uh, it's been good to see um, that people are uh, are starting to speak out against uh, government policy, um, which has been something that you know I've been following for quite some time, whether it be um, here or overseas. Um, I sort of go into pretty much uh, every uh, situation where I look at um, government policy that you know governments are corrupt to a certain degree. And I, you know, have a distrust of them uh, and the system in which they operate in. Um, so it's good to see people um, questioning policy now more than ever. Uh, and I think now with a lot of people in lockdown, a lot of people having uh, spare time uh, to allocate to um, researching, I think that that's really good. And we've seen a lot of people um, come out on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, especially in Melbourne, um, calling out the government for their policies and demanding some transparency. Yes, and that's what we've been lacking the, the most here in Victoria. Victoria has, uh, with, we've got this uh, hotel uh, quarantine uh, judicial inquiry taking, taking place. We still don't know who ultimately made their decision or who was in charge. We're, we're hearing, uh, well, as official evidence, all the uh, the stories of uh, quarantine breaches and, and poor practices coming out, but still they really haven't pinpointed who is responsible and how can that be? Uh, I think it's convenient for Dan Andrews. I think it's convenient that he can hide behind a, a judicial inquiry and uh, um, that he can, um, yeah, uh, diffuse responsibility uh, and deflect questions. Um, you know, he's blatantly lied about a few things regarding that as well, which is which is interesting. So I think he's just playing politics and trying to save his own reputation there. And he's also hid behind uh, the medical advice. And uh, we've seen uh, uh, this week, our uh, Chief Health Officer, Dr. Brett Sutton, say that the curfew, which currently is at 8pm uh, and has been during uh, this first six-week uh, lockdown, uh, wasn't something that he 
recommend it. He didn't say he was opposed to it, but obviously still signed off on it. And Daniel Andrews basically said, uh, confess. Well, he never really confesses, but it's basically the way you interpreted his. He, well, what he says that he is press, press conferences, and he basically said it's to make it easier for police to enforce the uh, the lockdown rules. And we've seen over the past couple of weeks just how uh, strictly, uh, if I can put it politely, uh, they enforce those lockdown rules. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I actually, I actually can't believe he came out and said that there are so many other things that you could say in that instance to justify the decision that you've made there. It just shows how out of his depth he is a little bit uh, in certain respects. I mean, Sutton has totally thrown him under the bus there, which is like, you know, I, I don't like either of them, to be honest. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy either way. But, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so many other things he could he could have said something about um, you know if there was a car accident at three o'clock in the morning you've got to divert resources from the health sector in terms of ambulance workers that could be used elsewhere uh, but no he didn't say that and it just shows well it doesn't it doesn't show verbatim but it sort of points to his nature as someone who enjoys control and I think that's that's the most concern, concerning thing out of that response. Well, it, that's certainly been his approach throughout the entire both first and, and second wave. Just use the big stick approach, uh, stay at home, or uh, uh, yeah, you'll receive uh, the, the, the 1652 penalty infringement notice, which I think is one of the, the highest uh, fines uh, for lockdown breaches anywhere in the, the world. Uh, it's certainly higher than what well, New South Wales is uh, a thousand. And that, uh, that, that has basically been his uh, approach not to, and it's been exposed uh, uh, this week, just how not, obviously we already knew about the, the, the hotel quarantine uh, stuff up, uh, debacle, whatever you want to call it, but also uh, the, the contact tracing uh, of, of Victoria basically uses uh, a 20th century technology. They're still using uh, posted notes and fax machines. And then he also made a, another a admission uh, that uh, he relaxed contact tracing when he thought the fir first wave was defeated so he, he his approach has just basically been if i keep everyone locked up let's hope that kills the virus yeah that pretty much sums it up and i think this um with the uh with the roadmap that he's come out with people have been dying for a nuanced approach to this we, we've got a lot of information coming out from all around the world, epidemiologists, virologists, specialists in their field, well-cited researchers saying that perhaps lockdowns and, and treating everything with the big stick is not the way to go, right? You've got businesses here in Melbourne that are basically on their last legs. You know, the hospitality industry is, how is it ever going to recover from this? Uh, you know, if, if, if we're not opening up for uh, until, uh, until late November in, in full capacity, how are these businesses going to survive? It's obvious that, you know, a nuanced approach is needed. And that's why Dan Andrews has caught such backlash for this roadmap that he's come out with. Uh, and it was clear that uh, he wasn't expecting such a, a backlash, uh, especially with the such the the low uh, trigger uh, thresholds to basically have some sort of normality. We've got to get, and I don't even understand this. Is it five uh, new daily cases over a two week period, or is it five new mystery cases? And we do know that mystery cases are different from new cases, and. So it's not even clear in that in that regard. Now we sort of walk back and said, "Oh, we might move the the the, the, th the thresholds." Or well, after uh, several uh, ep epidemiologists uh, questioned uh, his uh, modelling through the through that uh, super uh, computer. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is good to see. It's good to see people um, coming out in Melbourne. I mean, it's 
uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see that people are finally coming out in Melbourne, um, you know, people who are revered in their field actually saying, no, your modelling is is a little bit off um, and we need to please explain for it. I mean, epidemiologists from Europe have been uh, talking about the virus itself, uh, how deadly it is. They've been debating it um, and they've not been listened to. Uh, like it's happened in Europe, it's happened in the UK. Um, you know, the, the the initial models that came out of the Imperial College of London were so far off. Uh, it's not even funny. And they were the models that were used to put people into lockdown in the UK. So, and it's been, uh, well, I assume it's still being used to put them back into lockdown because we're in, we're just coming out of, of winter here in the southern hem hemisphere. Um, it shouldn't be a surprise that during July, August, during Melbourne winter, there were more people getting this, uh, this basically worst uh, version of the flu. And obviously up in, in Europe, they were opening up because obviously uh, the vir uh, virus doesn't spread uh, as much during summer, but obviously they're now in autumn and as, as it gets colder and we know that uh, the, the UK gets super, super cold, uh, you just wonder what, they're, what, the, what, what the daily cases are going to be like in uh, December and is it just going to be locked down for the whole winter there? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> I just I, I still cannot believe that it's being handled the way that it's being handled. Um, the world the, the the World Health Organization has toed and froed with with lockdowns. Are lockdowns good? Are lockdowns not good? Does asymptomatic transmission happen? Does it not happen? Uh, you've got uh, Maria Kirkov coming out one day saying that asymptomatic transmission is rare, and then you've got a com coming out the next day saying that uh, it's uh, it's not. Um, it was irresponsible for me to to say that uh, in some legalese uh, uh, statement that was obviously written by a lawyer. So yeah, it, it naturally you would assume that in the colder months uh, a virus is going to be more prevalent, and in the warmer months it it'll disappear to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what's what's the game plan from now on? Are we every time uh, we get a virus, are we going to just lock people down again? Is that going to be the game? Yeah, plan? are we going to basically have a, a winter lockdown and then open up again during the uh, the summer months? Because every well, the the, the last uh, three uh, flu seasons in uh, Australia have been extremely deadly and i've repeatedly said uh, on 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 this show and people have been following me for a number of years will know that uh, i got the flu in the the winter of 2019 it was absolutely horrible and it was obviously a it, it obviously is contagious and transmissible because uh, uh who i uh, co-host the uncuckables with uh david hiscock and and maddie rose from xyz they also got the the flu as well we don't know who patient zero was because uh, nobody did contact tracing for the flu uh, uh, uh back then but you see you see you see my point yeah 100 percent. yeah i know my my uh one of my mates got the, the flu last year and said it was that's pretty bad. Yeah, so, mine was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the thing. Is this is this the new normal now, as they refer to it? Is this going forward? How how are we going to operate? And it seems eerily enough that that's the way things are heading. And I think this is why you're seeing a sort of a backlash from society, particularly here in Melbourne, saying that this particular roadmap, this particular way of locking people down is not sustainable. We've got to come up with a nuanced approach. And obviously a lot of uh, Victorians uh, uh, were disturbed uh, last week with the uh, police uh, arrests and, and charges of incitement to, to five Victorians. And well, it's had over 10 million views now, the, the arrest of uh, Ballarat uh, pregnant mother Zoe, Zoe uh, Buller, uh, that, uh, uh, that was uh, obviously, it went all around the, 
uh, the world, Victoria, uh, Victoria Police, well, through Assistant Commissioner Luke Cornelius, he said even though the optics were, were terrible, Victoria Police acted appropriately. We, despite uh, those uh, arrests and, and warning of uh, Victoria Police presence, uh, the, the, there were still around about 200 people who turned up to the, the Shrine uh, of Remembrance on Saturday. Police said they made 17 arrests, issued 160 uh, fines. So, and yeah, obviously seeing that amount of uh, police on the on the street and there was another disturbing image from that day two elderly ladies who were uh, approached by five police officers these are the people like two old ladies they're people who were supposed to uh, protect from the, the 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 virus they're the the type of vulnerable people and you see the police standing over them and people like are they are they are they really the the greatest threat out on the street at the moment? That's what a lot of people thought when they saw the footage, which has also gone viral. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I watch a couple of shows uh, that operate in the US. They both covered the uh, the arrest of that woman in Ballarat. Um, so the the people of the world are watching Victoria and they're seeing what's going on. Uh, I understand. Look, I, I'm. I'm wary of of cop bashing because you know we see the defund the police movement. Yeah, and we see uh, where there's a no police uh, in a state over in the in those U.S. West Coast uh, cities such as Portland and Seattle, where it's not just that the police are told to stand down, but they don't feel they have the backing of the authorities, so they just stand down themselves. So we sort of have the the two contrasts: uh, Melbourne and Portland and Seattle. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, we live in a world of extremes at the moment, it seems, you know, it's either one or the other. There's nothing, it, it's either left, uh, left wing or your or your alt right. There's no, there's no nuance. To, well, there's hardly any nuanced discussion uh, around anything at the moment, um, you know, just as a commentary on society in general. But yeah, I, 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 I know that people within the force are apprehensive in doing some of the things that they are doing and they and they're sort of questioning right but these people have got families to feed as well so mm. it, it, it puts them between a rock and a hard place as well mm. um when when they're put in, into those positions you know having the riot squad out there for 200 people i mean just really just it it, it it's just beggars belief and we see uh, it's it's been revealed this week the the mobile surveillance uh, vans that have been deployed uh, near parks uh, the the drones that uh, are flying above and there's also some uh, new police helicopters that are being deployed. I'm not sure at night you've heard planes or helicopters uh, going uh, uh, going over uh, where you live. Um, I, I've heard them repeatedly and. They, it certainly grates on you because it's it, it, it's not something you're uh, you're, you're used to. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Surveillance measures have uh, been rolled out probably on a on a on a more global scale since probably nine eleven. Uh, but since the pandemic's definitely started, we've seen uh, more and more surveillance technology coming in for our own safety. Mm. Um, which is, which is concerning because, you know, we know that we're tracked with our smartphones uh, as it is. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't like that that's the case, but it, it, it is the case. But, you know, when do the people stop at a certain point and go, this has gone too far? You know, it, you, you can't, you know, people are trading up all these, uh, uh, and some of them are doing it unknowingly, trading these these liberties that they have, you know, the, the freedom of movement without detection. Um, they're trading up these liberties for, for safety and security. And often when that happens, you, you just never get them back. So it's extremely worrying to see these things happen. And now, as I mentioned, Dan Andrews, well, uh, it's, uh, uh, through here is I Stand With Dan, hashtag still has a, a lot of uh, support and there's still uh, a lot of uh, prominent uh, people still supporting his continuing lockdowns and slow uh, roadmap out such as a uh, former ABC radio host uh, John Fain uh, 
alleged comedian now Magda Shabansky, project host uh, Michelle Laurie, uh, a, a feminist academic uh, Jenna Price, and uh, communist advocate uh, Van Badham. And I say to them, like, how 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 much. Uh, lockdown is enough for you like how like how much how much long like just how much longer are you like uh, are, are you prepared to, to to stay at home for because we've all been told this is well, not not indefinite but just ju just to the, just to them because obviously well uh, Van Badham she uh, used to uh, used to do a lot of sp public speaking engagements and uh, appearances and that and so I just wonder well, when does she want to get uh, back out and about then? You see you see what I'm saying? Like, how long is this acceptable to you? You still stand with Dan, still support his plan, but when's it going to get too much for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sick of um, people on the TV and out-of-touch celebrities and, uh, and politicians um, lecturing people on, uh, you know, hard-working... Uh, people on, on how to live their lives. <laughs> and obviously for, for some people who, well, a, their, their, their personality, um, they're, or, uh, they're happy at home most of the time, uh, would rather have a night in uh, than go out. I've always been that type of person, so I've sort of been able to cope more mentally with that but for other people they like to live uh, uh, life in the fast lane they they like to live a, a nomad uh, gypsy lifestyle this type of lockdown where well, a basically all of australia is 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 grounded you can't leave the country uh, state borders are, are, are shut it's a it's a drastic change in lifestyle yeah well um i used to live on a uh, a tropical island called hamilton island and um, you would get, after a certain period of time, you would get uh, a bit of cabin fever from being on the island because there's only so much that you can do on the island. Mm. So, you know, it, it's sort of the same feeling now, whereas you want to go out. You'd, I'd love to go up to Queensland for a week and be able to, you know, get some fresh air, um, you know, sit by the beach for a while and clear my thoughts, but you can't do that. Um, and I've got mates who are really, really struggling with, uh, with mental health. Mm. Um, there's this one girl I know, she lives by herself. Um, in Melbourne or elsewhere? Melbourne. Melbourne, yeah. So, but yeah, th th there's so many other consequences and ramifications for this roadmap. And, yeah. Well, we've got tomorrow, uh, Are You OK Day, which is, it's it happens every year on 10th of September to uh, raise awareness of mental health and uh, ask your uh, friends and uh, co-workers, uh, are you okay? And obviously in Melbourne, we are not doing uh, okay. This was the uh, Richard Wollstonecroft uh, from the report of Tiger Mountain did a, a, a vlog on, on that this morning. This I've seen floating around Facebook. Uh, no, I'm not okay. On Thursday, 10th of September, let the Victorian government know that you're not okay. Post to uh, Dan Andrews and MPs Facebook and Twitter pages. And this is the sort of thing, no amount of extra mental health funding is or, mm. or hotlines is, is really going to help. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, we're social animals. We need to be in the company of others. And, you know, this just throwing money at, uh, at people and, and, and resources at, you know, these hotlines is, is not going to do anything. I mean, Nick Coatesworth comes out the other day and says uh, routine's important and encourages people to make their own bed. Yeah, so he sort of a, a, a said today, oh, I didn't mean to sort of belittle or insult uh, the Victorians, but... It's sort of the thing. Well, is that the best you could sort of do? I mean, yeah. you're there, one of the deputy chief uh, uh, medical officers uh, of Australia. Yeah, yeah. It just shows. It just shows how uh, out of touch some of these people really are. Uh, now we've also seen uh, some well, because it's easy for sort of Daniel Andrews to say, "Oh, I don't care what, for example, Sam Newman or or Jeff Kennett say about my policies," but it's a bit bit more difficult for him to sort of dismiss what actual uh, doctors and uh, epidemiologists uh, say uh, about about his roadmap out of lockdown. And last week, 
uh, the the COVID uh, doctors network uh, was launched, where it it, st it started, I think, with around about ten uh, doctors signing this letter to to Daniel Andrews, asking him to ease the the lockdown. Now the the site has been down for the past uh, past few days. If you if you go to COVID uh, doctors uh, doctors network. Uh, dot com it comes up with with this now i've been told that there's nothing sinister about this it, it's just there it's something that they're trying to fix so that uh, the uh, the the site is able to cope with everything so there is there is no sort of i know everyone sort of has a, a theory about if something like that goes down but no nothing sinister about that yeah I'd like to believe that, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it could it could just be something. But uh, uh, yeah, it just seems um, just seems fitting that uh, that that's that's occurred. Even uh, you know, especially when it's getting that much public support too. And now, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, fear uh, and uh, accusations that uh, Victoria is now uh, a police state. We're told that no, your, your democratic rights and freedoms. Uh, they're still in place. You're just not allowed to to protest out in public. You can uh, you can be an activist uh, online, uh, which which is true. I mean, we're not a, a communist China where if you uh, mock uh, Xi Jinping, uh, you're going to get your, your your door. Uh, knocked down. Uh, you will uh, if you're uh, uh, organising a, a protest, as we saw last week. But uh, I noticed that, uh, or in that uh, uh, vein of uh, uh, online activism, there, there's been quite a, a few virtual events to uh, uh, that uh, people can tune into, uh, show their uh, support uh, towards to uh, protest against the. Uh, the lockdown and and the curfew and the continuing uh, state of emergency. You were pr uh, a lot of people here would have probably seen some of them. One that's been going for a while is the the weekly regener uh, uh, reignite democracy uh, Australia, which takes place every Friday at seven thirty p.m. Uh, they've got some prominent a uh, a uh, voices and also uh, some uh, Victorian parliamentarians such as uh, Bernie Finn, Liberal MLC. Uh, Brad Rosewell, uh, Liberal MP for Sandringham, uh, David Limbrick, uh, Liberal Democrat uh, uh, MLC, and uh, that is a, a blossoming uh, movement. Uh, there's another one that has uh, popped up uh, of recent times, uh, Victoria Ford, which I know uh, has been criticised because uh, some of the organisers of a wall, uh, leaders of that, uh, members of the, uh, the the Liberal Party, but that doesn't distract from the messages that they're putting out. Theirs is a bit more a, a, a you'd say, crass, a give Dan the boot. It's time to stand up to Daniel Andrews. Now you can do it from home. Victoria Ford has launched Give Dan the Boot campaign, asking Victorians to join us at an at-home demonstration against Premier Andrews. Please uh, uh, place a pair of boots or shoes at the front gate or around your fence this Sunday, 13th of September, and post a photo of this event. News the tag, Give Dan the Boot. Give Dan the Boot is a silent protest, but the image of thousands of boots outside the gates of Victorian households will decisively convey that the Victorian people have no faith in the Premier. Let's send Premier Dan Landers a message. We want to give him uh, the boot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know about that one. Like, yeah, I, I suppose if, if you get a, a fair amount of people to do it, it might make a, a difference. But um, mm. yeah, yeah, there, there are, there have been actually. Um, there's one uh, that's that's um, brought my interest was uh, the Operation Mockingbird, which is sort of reversing the narrative, which is something that uh, Voice of Victoria have been doing, and and the and the millions millions rise people as well. Um, unfortunately, had their Age deleted last week, but essentially every time you see someone um, post something that uh, you know contradicts your beliefs, I suppose, or um, that it, you just believe is pure propaganda, you jump on there and, and um, you know you leave a comment, you make your voice known, um, fill up the comments section because you notice that um, especially on Dan Andrews' page, it's just a cesspool of uh, Dan Andrews supporters. Yeah, which is amazing. There's no sort of angry reacts or or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, 
if I was him and I was under this uh, amount of political pressure, I would uh, be employing some uh, some bots to. Well, uh, get we on. do know that he has sixty four staffers, uh, thirteen more than the prime minister. So maybe they're deleting all the comments. Yeah, yeah. comments. Yeah, I would, like uh, it, people have been saying that's been happening. Mm. So you know, uh, there is also a another. A, a protest that has been uh, promoted. This uh, uh, has been promoted by Catherine Cummings, uh, independent MLC, and also by David Limbrick, the curfew noise protest. Uh, end emergency powers. All Australians, please join in protest with Victorians t to show your support. Australia must find a better way. We must trust each other. We must manage risk proportionally. Show your support a better way. Get outside on your doorstep and open a window and make some noise. Sound your car horn, shout out, make music or bang on your pots and pans. Please share your experience, Australia United, uh, uh, dot org. Might have to get the guitar out for that one. Yeah. We'll see how uh, these virtual protests uh, go uh, on the, the weekend, the, uh, uh, the Boots one. It, it reminds me of that uh, uh, Simpsons episode, Bart versus Australia, where they invented that uh, booting uh, was a, a traditional Australian form of punishment. I'm not sure that was the, <laughs> the intention there. That's, uh, we know that there, there's so much... Uh, because the Simpsons have done everything, so many Simpsons-related uh, uh, references to this pandemic. Oh yeah, I know it's crazy. I posted one on my Instagram that was um, that was about the uh, it was about a virus essentially. It's like we they're plotting to uh, plotting a new virus. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, there's a there's a page uh, uh, COVID uh, related Simpsons meme. Uh, it's based. Uh, uh, it's run by an Australian, and there was one where uh, when when Bart's trying to imagine a a better field trip to the than the box factory one, and has Dan Andrews now instead of going into stage four lockdown, we're going into stage four lockdown, and then Victoria's like, "Damn, COVID's ruined my imagination." <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, I suppose if you don't laugh at that sort of stuff, it's uh, you're probably just going to cry. Mm. Now, another, well, I guess another indication that uh, uh, freedom and democracy has not been uh, uh, suspended in Victoria is that local government elections are pre proceeding in October uh, as scheduled. It's well, it's always been mail-in voting for for local government. Uh, so uh, you get uh, at the beginning of October your your mail-in uh, ballots, and I always say. Uh, with local government elections, make sure that you, because people aren't affiliated with a party for local government elections, so make sure you don't accidentally vote for a Labour, Green, Communist candidate. <laughs> yep, I would say that's uh, pretty important. Mm. Because uh, I'm seeing it on my uh, sponsored uh, Facebook uh, feed, uh, candidates who they, they they talk about these motherhood statements about what they want for their local area. I want blah 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 this and 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 that. Yeah, but how are you going to achieve that? Are you wanting to to basically have local councils? It be less intrusive on our daily lives, or are you wanting to basically raise the rates and spend it on all manner of programs? Yeah, yeah. It's important to uh, distinguish that. Now, obviously, uh, things uh, things are very uh, restricted here in in Melbourne with the the state home orders, the five kilometre radius, and the, the the curfew. And despite in the other states and territories uh, there being no restrictions on on leaving the the home, uh, they they still have a public gathering. Uh, limits, and we saw with the Freedom Day uh, protest in Sydney, where public gatherings are limited to 20, the directive from the police minister, David Elliott, and the health minister, Brad Hazard, is that uh, all the people who were at that uh, Freedom Day uh, event in, uh, in, in Sydney were counted as part of the, the same event. And so that's why the police went around fining and dispersing people. There were quite some, some ugly scenes in there uh, in Sydney. It sort of, uh, it sort of felt like uh, New South Wales police were sort of like reminding the public, hey, remember us? 
Yeah, 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 pretty much. I mean, yeah, I did see a few a few arrests that, that had occurred and, you know, just the heavy-handed approach is, is just concerning because, you know, and, and like I said to you before, like I don't want to get in, into police bashing because I've got a difficult job, but... Well, that, that's why I said this was, this came down from the health and police minister. Hmm, hmm. Well, you know, isn't that just concerning to say? I mean, they're just, like I said, they're just following orders, but... Um, hmm. You know, some some you know some of these officers. I, I saw one um, uh, in uh, in Brisbane that was having a laugh with the protesters and and joking about conspiracy theorists. And I thought that was probably a better way to approach that. I know that they are uh, in a little bit of a different position in terms of their restrictions, but um, I think there's a way to handle things too with uh, with tact um, and and nuance as well. Yeah, that key word uh, <laughs> discretion. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I did see it showed up in my Twitter feed that uh, because uh, both Brisbane and the Gold Coast, uh, due to uh, some uh, da uh, new daily cases, they've limited a indoor and public gatherings to ten, and that they've vowed. Well, they've given a warning to to protesters on Brisbane and the the, the Gold Coast that they uh, they can't gather as they did at the previous weekend's Freedom Day and uh, police commissioner uh, up there and the police minister gave them a spray oh I, I didn't know about that isn't that just um i mean if that's just convenient for them i would have thought coming out with that information now we'll talk about uh, the the hard border uh, closures now and obviously anastasia palaszczuk the uh, the Queensland Premier, she's uh, come into the uh, the most uh, criticism for her hard border closure, particularly uh, because she she made a, a brain uh, surgery patient uh, quarantine in a motel when she came back from Sydney to uh, Queensland. We had that unborn baby uh, uh, die uh, in northern New South Wales because had to get treatment in Sydney not the, the the Gold Coast. And then last week we saw those uh, 400 AFL officials allowed to quarantine in a hub at a luxury resort on the, the Gold Coast that from the aerial shots we saw no social distancing. Uh, they were all mingling, but it was defended because, oh, they're regularly uh, tested. But well, tell that to the, uh, the lady who had to uh, quarantine in a motel after brain surgery. Yeah, it seems that the rules apply to one specific group of people and not to another. I think that's the most uh, disconcerting thing and, and the most annoying thing for someone like me who's looked into, you know, uh, governmental corruption and, and that sort of thing for quite some time is that uh, those in positions of authority and positions of power have a different set of rules for them. And the common man, uh, all of the rules apply to them, but for those in positions of authority, only the rules apply to them sometimes. So, uh, um, but we're seeing more and more people um, wake up to this, which is good. And that's one thing for Anastasia Palaszczuk, as well, we expect double standards from politicians, but for this to be defended by the, the Chief Health Officer of Queensland, Dr. Jeanette Young, saying, yes, I signed off on this, this is, this is uh, uh, COVID safe. You're sort of like, are you serious? I mean, you're supposed to be an objective uh, medical professional, and you're saying it's okay for the, the AFL officials who've come from Melbourne, the, the ultimate coronavirus hotspot, to just frolic around poolside, uh, tanning? Well, well, if that's the case, let's, let's, get, uh, let's get these people tested and get them, get them into the state then. If, if that's the way that um, you know, a precedent's been set there, let's, let's allow people to be tested, let's say, uh, three days after they arrive. Um, if they don't test positive, they're good to go. So, you know, I don't understand why that thing isn't, something like that isn't being done. Uh, now, as we've established, uh, Daniel Andrews, he's basically said, I don't care what uh, anyone says uh, about uh, about my, my handling of this, which, uh, so he doesn't respond to the, the, the criticism uh, that's levied at him or the, all the, the, the memes uh, that are levied uh, all around there, the internet, the, the, the dictator, Dan Kim, uh, 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 Dan, uh, 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 Dan Jong on whatever 
well, there's there's heaps of different <laughs> names, but yeah. Anastasia Palaszczuk, she's a bit more, she's shown herself to be a bit more sensitive, saying, oh, a lot of this criticism is unfair and, 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 and disingenuous, or oh, uh, I, I shouldn't be subjected to this, and of course, people are going to be like, cry me a river. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, you you come out with any sort of opinion, or you're in any position of authority or power, you you gotta you gotta cop what comes your way. That's that's part of the job. They get paid really, really well to do what they do. So uh, you know, Crimea <laughs> River is exactly right. Well, she's done it again today, uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk, because uh, Tom Hanks and his wife. Uh, uh, Rita Wilson have been allowed to uh, return to the, the Gold Coast to resume filming uh, Baz Luhrmann's uh, Elvis Presley uh, biopic. Uh, they're allowed to uh, quarantine in a, in a luxury resort at, uh, at Broad Beach. Uh, uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk, uh, she's uh, defended this and you could also say since well tom hanks and rita wilson they got their coronavirus back in in march uh it's ex extremely almost impossible to uh, catch the coronavirus again but still uh it, it's still not a good look no spot on there i i, I, I can't believe that <laughs> And uh, she is definitely giving uh, Dan Andrews uh, a run for his money as uh, the the worst uh, state premier. I mean, by the sounds of it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, she is she has basically almost eliminated the virus from the from the state. And well, when they had a few a few cases, she reduced the the, the limits uh, from thirty. 30 people gathering down to 10 uh, immediately. Uh, so she's certainly a, doing the, the, the knee-jerk approach when there's a spike in, in cases. And so, since with, with Dan's plan that it's basically going for elimination and Anastasia Palaszczuk said, I won't open the border with New South Wales until they have uh, uh, 28 days of uh, zero community transmission which is extremely difficult to obtain it's basically these politicians these leaders have no faith in uh, their government's ability at uh, contact tracing or their healthcare system that they don't feel that they could handle and contain well an, an outbreak yeah 100 percent. and you ask any nurse at any other time other than this they always work long hours. They're always rust off their feet. So we know that these in uh, these sectors are perhaps underfunded and understaffed and overworked. And this is the fault of the government for not channeling taxpayer dollars into these sectors in preparation for 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 something like this. If they barely if they barely get through uh, a normal flu season. Right? Wouldn't you look to divert more funds into that sector? Well, we saw uh, as a as a whole, the the nation was unprepared with the the massive uh, sh uh, amount of ventilators that needed to be ordered in the 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 testing kit. Supposedly, the the first lockdown is so we could ha get everything in place in case uh, there was a second wave, and we'd know how to. Uh, contain it, but obviously Victoria is the the starkest example. I don't know what they did during the the first lockdown because they they weren't ready for the uh, the, the, the 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 second wave. That you was you're supposed to use this time when there was there there were lack of resources, a lot of unknowns to get everything in place in case there was a second wave, and it doesn't look like too much has sort of changed in or their own confidence into containing a second wave? Uh, yeah, either the government is horribly corrupt or there is an ulterior motive here that is coming from directions from an organisation like the WHO. Um, so it's, um, I mean, you, you thought you would have, uh, you know, learned from aged care outbreaks in New South Wales because it's it's certainly affected aged care down in Victoria. 
Yes, which yeah. with tragic uh, consequences, that's uh, uh, that that's certainly been the the darkest uh, aspect of the uh, the pandemic. Here, a New South Wales has been seen as well the the gold standard for for contact tracing and also staying open while uh, containing outbreaks and continuing to suppress the. Uh, the virus. Uh, they, they're, they're still open with uh, no uh, mask mandate, uh, although a nightclubs, for example, uh, aren't open. Uh, we've seen in Queensland nightclubs are open, but you're not allowed to, to dance. Uh, some, some nightclubs have got uh, uh, fines for uh, dancing uh, up there. Uh, but at least people are s still... Yeah, well, that is, it's a, New South Wales had, has got sort of some semblance of, and again, it's a horrible word, COVID normal. Yeah, I, I, I hear that the hospitality sector up there is is, is really, really struggling. Um, I was listening to Alan Jones talk to um, Eddie McGuire and Luke Darcy this morning. Oh, was so, he on their um, show this morning? Yeah, he was, yeah. Oh, well, good on uh, Eddie, because I know that he's a hardcore labour man for... Uh, uh, having Alan Jones on the, on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Good on him and, and good on him for letting Luke, da him, um, uh, uh, Luke Darcy talk to Dan Andrews. Yeah, that day. was excellent. Yeah. Present, um, you know, present a, a different point of view. I, I looked at that, um, that study that, uh, he actually referenced, uh, in the Lancet, um, which pointed to lockdowns, uh, and, um, not lockdowns, not being, uh, responsible for an overall increase in mortality uh, with the virus. So, yeah, that was really, really good. It's good to see that. And, and you see it on, uh, you know, Channel 7 as well. Um, you know, Koshi, Koshi, you know, say what you want about him, but he was having a, having a bit of a crack at Jenny McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. That, that was good <laughs> as well. And I say about the mainstream media, better late than never because you were egging on Dan to go to stage four to to crack down on uh, COVID idiots and uh, uh, anti anti maskers and now well you're finally applying some real scrutiny and well now we're actually finding out just how poor uh, Victoria's contact tracing system is and again Dan again not confessing that his system isn't up to scratch but what is that uh, fact finding to New South Wales. Uh, this week and digitalizing the uh, the system. That's his way of sort of, <laughs> we've learned how to read Dan Andrews well when he's sort of, because we know he's never going to admit that he's wrong, uh, but you just sort of read into that. Yeah, that's a admission there without him saying that he stuffed that up. Yeah. I I, do you know if they were, if um, Victoria was offered at any point um, help from the New South Wales government or the federal government with contact tracing? Because I cannot understand how we were on a non-digitalized -digi system, mm. uh, you know, and, and they were. I, I, you know, you'd think that um, if we're all in this together, that um, – he would be accepting help from these from the federal government. You know, you talk about the ADF mm. and the hotel quarantine. You'd think, you know, he wouldn't just be looking after his mates. And um, but yeah, it just it just shows his shortcomings as a leader, I guess. Yeah, and I, I just noticed that there was a what was a what was a Daily Mail article again. We should sort of take that uh, with a with a, a, a grain of salt. But they they got some uh, body language uh, experts to to analyze Dan. Uh, at the at the 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 press conferences, is you know how is uh, uh, how much of a toll uh, it is taking on his uh, demeanor uh, based on his body language during the uh, the press conferences. There's constant uh, calls for his uh, resignations now. There's uh, speculation rumors that uh, his uh, uh, Labor uh, caucus uh, they're deciding on a. Uh, replacement and there's even that uh, petition to, to call on the governor uh, to dissolve the the, the, the state parliament uh, to call a fresh election that would be very unprecedented if a mm. state governor took that course of action but just shows you the the growing uh, anger uh, and despair in the community I think I think really what was the catalyst for this was Parliament sitting last week 
And you, you have to think, if Parliament had been sitting all the way through, would we be in the position now that we are in? Mm. Yeah, the well, it only sat last last week so that uh, Dan Andrews could pass the, the six-month extension to the, the exactly. state of emergency uh, powers. We, we heard some really good speeches uh, from... Uh, Liberal MPs and and Crush members uh, opposing uh, the extension. Probably the the best on the Liberal side were uh, Matthew Guy, former uh, Liberal uh, op op opposition leader. If only he'd shown such passion uh, two years ago. Also uh, 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 James uh, Newbury, uh, the uh, member for Brighton. He also gave a good speech and also uh, uh, Tim Smith as well, who basically, well, he, he, he was the, 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 the catalyst uh, for the, the firecracker being put under the uh, Victorian Parliamentary uh, Liberal Party when he called uh, Dan Andrews a, a friendless uh, loser back in, was that, that was back in, in June. And he did his own uh, uh, how dare you uh, <laughs> in his in his speech to to Dan Andrews blaming ordinary Victorians for the second wave when it's his government's uh, uh, incompetence there they were all really good speeches and it was put to me by by a friend where we're, we're seeing a few more uh, politicians uh, grow some balls uh, during this pandemic I'm not sure if you follow Craig Kelly on on Facebook but oh, yeah. he has been uh, particularly outspoken about what's happening in victoria yeah yeah I've, uh, i uh, actually started following his page last week and it was it's good to see like it's good to see real strong opposition you know um i i didn't really follow any of these people you know like uh tim smiths and and matthew guys but the speeches that they that they have made i think are incredibly important and like i was saying i think that's been the catalyst for more public debate uh, surrounding the response to COVID-19. Uh, you've seen since uh, the mainstream media has intensified their scrutiny uh, of little scrutiny there was before, but they've um, they've turned up the heat on Andrews, which has been good to see. Um, but perhaps this has given, uh, you know, someone like a, a Catherine Cumming coming out, um, David Limbrick, perhaps this has given uh, the... Uh, confidence for people in the medical industry to come out as well. Um, and then you've got these these doctors that have come out and uh, uh, are saying that there, there's another way. You know, we need, we need some independent discussion around this. Um, you needed, you know, a, di you know, a diverse range of voices um, giving opinions and advice to Andrews. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it, people were dying out for it and it's sort of, made some people perhaps who were Andrew's supporters realise that it's not quite the echo chamber that they thought it was. You know, I think a lot a lot of these people who support Dan Andrews uh, live in a little bit of an echo chamber to a degree. They surround themselves with people who uh, support Dan Andrews, who have similar views, and there is nothing more important, you know, whether in politics or anything, to surround yourself with a diverse range of people who challenge you on your opinions and hold you to account for what you say. I had the, the pleasure of interviewing Craig Kelly. Uh, it was just at the end of the, the first wave uh, uh, on my on my show. I'd love to have him uh, on again, uh, not too soon. And he made that point that he, he said that even uh, amongst his staffers, he, he doesn't want them to be yes men. He wants them to, to challenge him and have a robust, uh, ro robust discussion uh, and, and debate as well. Yeah, of course. That's that's you know that's it's good to see someone like him thinks that way too, and you see with the censorship on Facebook, you know them censoring one side of the political spectrum. It seems um, and censoring anything that contradicts World Health Organization guidelines, uh, and 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 it and it shuts down any discourse that should be had. And you know we're not we're not talking about you know conspiracy theories like oh the royal family are reptiles. We're talking about uh, citing epidemiologists who have a different opinion. 
a world-renowned researchher, Dr. John Ioannidis from Stanford University, you know, one of the most cited researchers of the last 20 years, you know, Dr. Sukhrit Bhakti too in Germany. These people have been saying from the start that there, that there are other ways of uh, tackling this crisis. Uh, there are other ways that, that all is not as it seems uh, and, and the narrative that is being pushed by the mainstream media, uh, by world figures, uh, needs to be questioned. Now, uh, as I said in my introduction, we're seeing the, the UK uh, go, back in, uh, go back into the, the, the lockdown strategy, which, uh, as I call it, the, the, the yo-yo uh, uh, approach uh, in and out. And if you don't mind me, I'll just go through this uh, Sky News UK article. So this is about social gatherings of more than six people to be banned in England on Monday. Uh, so first offenders will be fined £100. That's obviously a lot less than the $1,652 fine that you get in Victoria. That's roughly 200 Australian dollars, which will double on each further repeat offence of up to £3,200, which is around 6400 Dollars. I, I know the thing about Victoria's fines is that because I think there was a person who got twenty four a, a a penalty infringement notices in Victoria, but they're all for the same amount. And even though they've got twenty four, uh, 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 Victoria police uh, not seeking to 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 jail them. Uh, so this is what Ed, uh, uh, Boris Johnson said: uh, We need to act now to stop the virus spreading. And the government advertising uh, campaign entitled Hands Face Space. That's quite cringe. Oh. And then we've got uh, 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 going down here. Uh, it, is a, it is absolutely critical that people now abide by these rules and remember the basics. And if we go further down here, uh, the crackdown comes after warnings from government medical chiefs that the public, particularly young people, are now too relaxed about the coronavirus with, uh, with the result that COVID-19 rates are now uh, tw uh, 20 per uh, 100,000 people. Government announcement follows the Health Secretary Matt Hancock imposing a ban on socialising with people from other households in Bolton with restaurants on the town limited to now serving takeaway food and a 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew on all venues. Head of Mr. Kangox Bolton announcement, England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Professor uh, 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 Jonathan Van Tam, warned of a bumpy ride over the next few months unless the virus was taken incredibly seriously. And again, so basically we're seeing this uh, nanny state approach, this, uh, health, uh, uh, the, uh, the, this health policy by technocrats that we know what's good for you do what we say follow the rules that's the only way yeah 100 percent. yeah um and and unfortunately uh unless there is greater public scrutiny it's only going to get worse i think what we're seeing here in victoria and i, I was you know the first lockdown, I was sort of like, okay, I didn't know much about it. I was like, all right. Yeah, no. I was the same as well. I was like, all right, no worries. Like, I'll go into lockdown. It's kind of a new experience. But yeah, that, that was sort of the the uh, uh, the attitude of a lot of people. Oh, yeah, this is, you know, we could do this, uh, you know, uh, in the short term. It's a bit different, you know, like and sort out all the junk in, in my cupboard, learn how to cook uh, again, that sort of thing. But... Yeah, obviously, uh, with it, well, especially with Victoria, then opening up and then going back into lockdown, then uh, an ext uh, uh, extreme uh, draconian stage four lockdown, uh, it certainly uh, is way different uh, than the first time. What precedent does this set? You know, like we were discussing earlier, every time a new pathogen comes in, every time the new seasonal flu comes in, it's like, oh, look how well, um, you know, it worked for COVID. You know, let's say a couple of years down the road, let's look how well it worked for COVID. I guess we'll just shut down now during winter. You know, mm. don't worry about all the small businesses that, uh, that that's going to affect. Uh, let's do it to, uh, you know, to, to protect you, right? And um, Neil Ferguson, who was... Um, 
who was the guy who uh, was responsible for the uh, Imperial College of London uh, bogus epidemiological reports, came out and said um, a couple of months later that uh, two thirds of the people that had died with COVID in the UK this year probably would have died anyway. So n not to say that, that, you know, not to justify, you know, us being open using that, but I thought that that was an interesting uh, interesting take on it. Well, the, the, the full impact of the the lockdowns both economic and and health wise uh won't won't be fully felt until uh the aftermath uh because obviously we don't get the the full uh the uh, suicide statistics until the or well, the end of the year and there could be carryover a a suicides in the in the years to come because of the lockdowns the livelihoods and businesses uh destroyed obviously the people who uh, didn't get their their cancer uh, screenings or seek uh, medical care because of other reasons as well uh, because all the hospitals uh, were reserved for for covid and obviously uh, hospitality at being the first to, to to be required to shut under coronavirus uh, restrictions but uh, retail like in uh, in person retail shops uh, there's there's a long list of a uh, uh, retailers in Australia who've, who've said uh, that they're not going to to reopen post this uh, pandemic. Obviously, the the move to to online shopping uh, has has led to a lot of retail jobs uh, being being shattered. But this is just turbocharged it with well a lot of retailers now going to as it's as it called contactless uh, click and collect or delivery. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And and I think we're probably, I think a lot of businesses uh, will probably restructure uh, moving forward, maybe due to um, the economic damage that they have seen from this. And this is me speculating, mm. um, you know, with, with the advancements in technology that we've seen, um, you know, in the future, how many of the jobs that are uh, here today are going to be here in the future anyway. Um, so, yeah, I think I think society, you know, we see uh, people at the World Economic Forum talking about this being a catalyst for, uh, you know, the Great Reset. Uh, so it'll be, yeah, you're right. We won't we won't see the full effect of the lockdown, uh, particularly with mental health. I mean, you know, depression is uh, something that that does creep up on you. Um, and and it can be very very hard to shake as well. So um, and if you and you know, if, if we get out of this lockdown and, and things are good for a couple of months, but then we, we start to realise the economic damage that has occurred uh, and, uh, you know, things won't go back to the way they were. Now, the the Morrison government, they uh, announced, well, it was a few weeks ago now, that they'd secured a, a oh, manufacturing and uh, distribution uh, deal for the, the Oxford university coronavirus vaccine which is is going through uh, stage three clinical trials they've also done the the same uh, deal uh, with a, a university of queensland uh, trial and and this is what uh, uh, liberal mps were uh, promoting on their their facebook the morrison government a uh, australia secures 84.8 million COVID-19 vaccine doses free and voluntary in italics there for, for all Australians because Scott Morrison initially said uh, he'd uh, make it as mandatory as possible but then backtrack from it. He did say he did previously say that he would, he, he would consider making the COVID safe app mandatory which as we've seen uh, it's been a complete flop there the COVID uh, safe app and not everyone has uh, smartphones but obviously this uh, vaccine uh, is is a, is a bit uh, uh, different but then we got the 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 news today and I'll I'll share this uh, the, uh, the the news from today is that uh, the the Oxford vaccine tri uh, trial facing challenge as volunteers suffer suspected uh, serious adverse uh, reaction. Now we're told that this is uh, common uh, during a clinical trials and they just said this is a standard review uh, procedure, routine action 
and that they don't know that, uh, well, we're not told what this suspected adverse reaction is, whether they got the actual vaccine or a placebo, whether it is related to the, the vaccine. But the point is, given that the perception is that this vaccine has been, been rushed, people are very suspicious about uh, uh, this vaccine, a lot of people are suspicious about all vaccine, uh, it, say if this vaccine does get approved eventually, the fact that this has been reported is going to make people even more suspicious about wanting to take it. Yeah, exactly right. And I think it's been really, really good. The uh, I was um, reading something from uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, this morning. Uh, he uh, runs the Children's Health Defence Fund. Um, he is uh, not an anti-vaxxer, contrary to what the mainstream media will have you uh, have you believe. He believes in safe vaccines, but he's been fighting vaccine injury on, on behalf of children that have been vaccine injured in the US for, uh, for a number of years. Uh, and he was saying that um, a vaccine trial has never had this much public scrutiny in the past, and that it is really, really good that that's happening. Uh, initially, I believe with this vaccine, that they were, were going to test it against a different vaccine that they... Uh, believed to be safe, but wasn't really safe. But I do believe now they're pl uh, testing against a pl placebo, and that uh, having this sort of public scrutiny on it is 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 really really good because it's going to hold these people to account, despite the fact that there is no uh, there will be no financial liability if people do um, have any adverse reactions once it is rolled out. But yeah, I think people will be uh, will grow more and more skeptical regarding this vaccine. Uh, as it gets closer and closer to the time um, where it will be rolled out. Now, apparently there are nine uh, potential coronavirus vaccines in stage three clinical trials, which is the, the final stage, the most advanced widespread uh, uh, clinical testing stage. There are 170 uh, in total at various uh, stages uh, of testing. So if this one falls through, it's not... Uh, it, 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 it's not the, uh, the the end of it, but uh, the reason why um, there's a lot of interest uh, from Australians in this vaccine, particularly Victorians, because well, given Dan's uh, slow roadmap and his this basic uh, de facto elimination strategy, a vaccine looks like it's the only way that uh, Victoria can get to normal, which his plan says that uh, a normal uh, will be when uh, a vaccine uh, is is found yeah and and you know they say that it will be voluntary but i i wonder if there's going to be any coercion strategies implemented or whether it's going to be completely voluntary well, at that's all. what uh, dr nick uh, or dr nick's coatsworth everyone just calls him dr nick now talked about the incentive slash big stick program which yeah, is what you what you were talking about yeah the no jab no pay kind of uh kind of deal and i think you know i'm not sure that that's entirely ethical um but uh, yeah we'll see if that actually happens i i imagine and I, i've spoken to a lot of people about this i imagine that there would be um, a large amount of public backlash if there was uh something like that implemented I mean, they even uh, they they still haven't uh, forced people to take coronavirus tests. I know that uh, New South Wales, for their hotel quarantine now, uh, if you refuse a COVID test, you have to stay twenty four days instead of fourteen. And uh, Jenny McCarkos, uh, our health minister, even admitted, no, we can't force people to take uh, coronavirus uh, uh, tests uh, against their will. Yeah, which is um, <clears throat> yeah, which which is good, which is good, and I, I think um, there's a couple of uh, there was there's one law firm um, that's that's that doesn't believe that something like that would able would be able to occur. So yeah, G and B uh, lawyers, uh, their uh, their partner Nathan Buckley is uh, uh, crowdfunding a class action against South Australia's uh, no no jab no play policy. Yeah, so you know, it, there are people. There are good people out there who um who are you know willing to put their reputation and names on the line, uh, which is good to see. Uh, another uh, development over the past twenty four hours. I'm not sure that uh, you've followed this. Uh, 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 
there was uh, two uh, Australian uh, journalists, uh, the Financial Review, Review's Michael Smith and the ABC's uh, Bill Burtis, who flew out of Shanghai on Monday in fears for their uh, safety because uh, China uh, 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 wanted them in relation to a national security uh, in investigation. And uh, we've seen uh, today uh, that uh, Chinese media officials have been targeted as part of an Asia AFP uh, investigation into allegations of foreign interference by a former uh, New South Wales backbench uh, staffer here. And uh, these are the, uh, well, there's two Chinese scholars and uh, two media uh, officials. Now, China has accused uh, Australia of hypocrisy saying hey you're accusing us of cracking down on on foreign journalists uh, look what, what what you're doing and obviously the past year there's been a lot of uh, scrutiny about uh, China's de facto takeover of Hong Kong they arrested a 12 year old girl for for protesting but given what we saw in Victoria on the weekend and the detainment of uh, uh, RV Yemeni uh, for uh, reporting on on Saturday's protest and they threatened Paul Dowsley Channel 7 reporter with arrest are we really want to criticize uh, totalitarian uh, China for their treatment of our journalists yeah, valid point. Mm. I mean, I, I think I think China's a little bit uh, far ahead, but yeah, it's, yes. pretty, it's pretty it's pretty ironic. Like <laughs> we're uh, we're down here, and then you know, freedom of the press is uh, you know, yeah. You know, I, I watched that video of um, Viamini, and I watched the conversation between uh, yeah, Paul Dowsley and 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 the other bloke that was there, and um, yeah, it's just freedom of the press is important and, and, you know, there's a lot of propaganda that comes through the mainstream media networks, but um, you still need the press to a certain degree. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, the only thing uh, that is holding uh, Dan Andrews to account at the moment. He is uh, daily uh, press conferences, which during the Q and A uh, it's, it's quite, I don't watch them anymore. I just can't stand them anymore i'd rather uh, even though covering these things is is, is part of my uh, job running the <laughs> the unshackled there's only so much uh, you can take and so much of the questioning goes around in circles because of course dan andrews uh, doesn't answer the question or he's trying to explain one of his new rules uh, how it applies in that and you just sort of uh yeah it's 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 it's, it's hard to watch one thing I've noticed with him is he's an absolute expert in getting the ball in his court where he wants it. So someone will ask him a question and he'll use a couple of different words that are sort of interconnected but don't mean the same thing to get him to a place where he wants to answer a question that wasn't necessarily the question that the journalist want, wanted answered but further uh, develops his own narrative. I noticed that um, in his interview with Luke Darcy, how he would go from something that uh, Luke asked him uh, and then use a couple of words in between to get to a question that he wanted to explain. Yeah, he's not alone. He's not the only politician who does that. They all uh, do it to, to some degree and they, they don't answer the, uh, the question. They give the award. They, they pro provide an answer that they want to, but it's not the question that was asked. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, political double speak. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nathan, for, for joining me uh, tonight. Uh, as I said, uh, it's it's great to, to interview and, and come across and, and meet people such as yourself online during uh, uh, these uh, concerning times. And, well, none of us know <laughs> what the numbers are going to be tomorrow. Uh, people, Another meme that people have been sharing that basically the daily coronavirus uh, numbers now it's basically like lotto numbers you never know what they're gonna be <laughs> yeah 100 percent. no um thanks for having me on really appreciate it. it's been uh, it's been good thanks for tuning in to wilms front visit timwilms.com or rational rise tv to view the archive of episodes and keep visiting the unshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.